From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Mort Parkinson, Johnny, Eternity Mutual. Oh, how are you, Mort? I couldn't feel much worse. It's the olives that do it, not the martinis. I wish it were that simple. Can you come over to my office right away, Johnny? Well, I guess so, if... I uh... don't often pull that confidential business, but I really would hesitate to go into this one on the phone. Pretty rough, huh? I'm afraid you're going to find it even worse than that. It's, uh... It's about Ed Morgan, Johnny. Ed Morgan? I'm sorry. I know he was a good friend of yours. He's one of the best I ever had. Ed was a great guy. It's too bad he had to die that way. Johnny, it's too bad he didn't die a year sooner. What? You'd better come on over at the office. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office, Eternity Mutual Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the confidential matter. Item one, $2.85. Taxi from my apartment to the Eternity Building in the seventh floor office of Mort Parkinson, vice president and general manager. It was a room I well remembered, with its black walnut paneling and deep leather chairs. I'd worked on a lot of cases with Mort, and with the late Ed Morgan, too. And it sounded now as though Ed, my good friend from a long time back, was about to become a case himself. Come in, Johnny. Pull up a chair. Thanks, Mort. Well, that was quite a phone call. It's quite a situation. Yeah, I gathered that. No, I just can't talk sitting down. Old habit, I guess. Remember when we used to be over in the old Johnstone building before we built this new one? We had those old-fashioned stand-up desks. It was when old man Clement was still alive. And before I was. Hmm? Oh, yes, I... Yes, I keep forgetting about you newcomers. Meaning everybody who's come into the game within the last 40 years. I suppose I am one of the original settlers. And set in my ways, too. Yeah, well, what about I you? I sure hated to see those desks go. You could stand in front of them, lean an elbow on them, make out a report or a speech. Mort, or do... you're trying too hard to avoid it. Avoid what? You didn't call me over here just to reminisce about the old days. In a way, maybe I did. You know, it's funny. I always thought you liked Ed Morgan. But I did. And why did you say it's too bad he didn't die a year sooner? Because I liked him. Except like is too weak a word, actually. I thought as much of Ed as I would have of my own son if I'd had one. Why, I'm the one who hired him in the first place. Remember, Johnny? Yeah, I remember. And I took a personal interest in his career. Watched him work his way up. Till finally he was appointed chief adjuster for the West Coast, head of our San Francisco claims office. That was darn good for a man as young as he was. And I was proud of him, Johnny. Yeah, I know. I know you were. He was a hard worker. Honest, dependable. And he had a good, sound future ahead of him. And then, just like that. Accidents are usually just like that. A foggy night, sharp curve, and he drove his car off a cliff into the Pacific Ocean. And that was that. Tragedy. Feeney, the end. Only it apparently wasn't the end. Or you wouldn't have called me over here. No, it wasn't, Johnny. I wish it had been. Meaning? You'd better brace yourself. Within two weeks after Ed Morgan's death, we started getting complaints from some of our clients. Out what do you mean, complaints? Oh, demands for adjustment on claims Ed had reported paid weeks before. Requests for past due settlements and so on. Mort, I don't get it. Neither did I. So I sent a company accountant out to San Francisco on the QT and put him to work on the claims files. And we found out, Johnny. You found out what? That Ed's accounts had been doctored for some time. What? Johnny. In the months before he was killed, he'd embezzled nearly $80,000. Ed Morgan? Ed Morgan. I don't believe it. He did it. You might as well accept the fact. Anybody else, yes, anybody else. But not Ed. For one thing, money didn't mean that much to him. I know. We were always joshing him about living like an old hermit instead of a young bachelor. Well, th then why would he do it, steal $80,000 after all these years of being honest? What would he want that would cost that much money? That's exactly what I wish you'd find out. Now, wait a second, Mort. Wait a second. 
This is one I don't want any part of. Neither do I. But I'm afraid I'm stuck with it. And you are too, in a way. Why? Because Ed was your friend. Here's a flight ticket and reservation to San Francisco. Plane leaves in two hours. No, no, no. I'd rather pass it, Mort. Well, so would I. But we can't. Neither of us. There are too many questions left. And they've got to be answered. Not by me. $80,000 of the company's money is missing. I can't just write it off and forget it. It has to be accounted for. There are other investigators, Mort. And another thing that's just as important, to me at least, is to find out why he did it. It's a failure in human dynamics. A man like Ed, a man everybody respected and trusted, and he goes wrong. Why? Get somebody else to find out. I'd be pretty grateful if you'd do it, Johnny. Mort, I just don't want any part of it. I know how you feel. It's quite a shock to find out he was a crook. It's like somebody pulling the rug out from under you. So now you want to forget all about him. Leave him safely dead and buried. Dead, Mort, but not buried. If you remember, they recovered the car, but not his body. It's still somewhere beneath the Pacific. All right, then. Look at it from an efficiency standpoint, if nothing else. To any other investigator, Ed Morgan would be just a name, an unknown quantity. But you knew him. I thought I did. Regardless of what he did, Johnny, I just hate to think of a stranger pawing into his past. Maybe I still think back to the old times in the old country when the family buried their own dead. I know, I know. And sometimes, Johnny, a friend has to go all the way. Even when the other person is... Uh, uh, goofed, isn't that what the younger generation calls it? I'm not the younger generation, Mort. Right now, I'm older than Confucius. I'd sure appreciate it, Johnny. And after all, somebody's got to do it. <sighs> yeah, somebody's got to do it. And like you said, Ed was my friend. All right, Mort, let's have the ticket. Item two, $14.35, tips, taxi, and incidentals in Hartford and same in San Francisco. Plane trip between points paid from expense account of company manager and not included herewith. I went straight from the airport to Ed's last address when he was still alive, an apartment house in the Knob Hill section called the Drakeley Arms. And there's where I got my first surprise. Ed had always been the two-room bachelor walk-up type. But the Drakeley Arms consisted of equal parts of glitter, glass, swank, and price, including a uniform doorman, a small private bar off the lobby, and an assistant manager with a gardenia on his lapel. Oh, he was a rare one, that manager. And it was a real gardenia. I am, of course, most desirous of assisting you in every way possible, Mr... Uh, uh, what did you say your name was? Dollar. D-O-L-L. -L. I can spell dollar. I'll bet you can. I beg your pardon. Oh, it's quite all right. I didn't mean... You didn't mean to be offensive, I understand. Now, about the former occupant of Suite 14. Mr. Dollar, I'm terribly afraid... Oh, please don't be. I mean, there is simply very little I can tell you about the late Mr. Morgan. A matter of discretion? Is that it? Discretion? A policy of the house? Something of that sort? Well, we do, of course, try to protect the privacy of our residents. I'm sure you understand. Even to the extent of turning down $20? Uh, well... A curse one, isn't it? Uh, under the circumstances... Nice of likeness of Andrew Jackson, isn't it? Uh, thank you, sir. Gratuities of this nature are always so helpful in smoothing the rough pathway of human relations. Don't you think so, Mr. Dollar? Definitely. It's already helping you remember my name. Uh, <laughs> well, money is a mental stimulant, isn't it? Don't call it money. Just think of it as item three. I beg your pardon. Item... Oh, that's quite all right. I meant... Yeah, I know. It's a kind of a habit I seem to be picking up. Now, has your memory been stimulated any in regard to Ed Morgan? Oh, yes, the late Mr. Morgan. <laughs> Pardon me, Mr. Dollar. Yes? Oh, yes, Countess Margie. Yes, I'll be delighted to send the boy up for two quarts of suds. Suds? Uh, would a nice dry Bavarian ale be... Yes, Countess, just plain beer. <laughs> yes, Countess, right away. <sighs> Frightful old lady. He mixes it with creme de menthe, you know. <laughs> now, where were we, Mr. Dollar? We weren't, not yet. Oh, yes, the late Mr. Morgan. Well, he'd been our guest, you understand, for about six months at the time of his uh, tragic accident. What was he paying for his suite of rooms? Oh, well, ordinarily, we don't release information of Forget that. Forget it. This is not ordinary. How much? Uh, $1,200 a month. I see. Oh, he was a true gentleman, if I may say so. A bon vivant. And uh, on the crassly materialistic side, if you'll forgive me, sir... A very free spender. 
Sorry, 20's the limit. Mr. Dollar, I was not trying to coerce your generosity by, uh, well... Putting on another bite? Precisely. All right. So Ed was bedded down in a mink line stall and was throwing money around like water. What else? Who came to see him? What sort of visitors did he have? Well, none at all that I can recall. None at all? He leased that overpriced cubicle and then just sat in it? Well... What about friends here in the building? Oh, well, most of our guests might be termed individually exclusive. <laughs> Even eccentric in some cases. Except, of course, Mrs. Barrett. Mrs. Barrett? Yes. One of the loveliest guests we've ever had the pleasure of... Excuse me, Mr. Dollar. Yes. Yes, Countess Margie. The boy is on his way. I know. But he has to go clear down to the corner. Yes. Well, please tell little Pim Pam that I'm so sorry. A dog drinks that stuff, too. Now, where were we? About this Mrs. Barrett you mentioned. Oh, yes. Well, of course, she and Mr. Morgan were inseparable, you understand. They were together constantly. And Mr. Barrett? Oh, there wasn't any. Well, not recently, I mean. Uh, deceased. You know, dead. Yeah, when? Early this year, as I recall. I didn't know him, of course. Mrs. Barrett moved in here shortly after his death. Not until then. And Ed Morgan, when did he move in? About uh, six weeks later. Oh, he met her here then? Oh, no. No, they were already acquainted. <laughs> well acquainted. I see. In fact, I believe that Mr. Morgan and the young and very lovely widow met at the time of her husband's death, a matter of uh, settling the estate or something of that sort. It would figure all right. Uh, I but don't you remember said... exactly why I thought so, but I do recall having an impression at the time that he moved in here only because of her. And as I say, they were together constantly right from the first. That's all very interesting. I wonder if I could have a talk with this, Mrs. Berry. Mm, that would be utterly impossible, I'm afraid. Now, look, if you think you I can pry... I simply mean she isn't here. Isn't here? She's been gone for ten days now. Where'd she go? I really haven't the slightest idea, Mr. Dollar. Well, if she moved out, she must have left a forwarding address of some kind. Oh, she didn't move out. She still has her apartment here. She'll be back eventually, I imagine. But at the moment, she I she's... haven't heard a word from her since she left. Oh, poor dear. You know, one can understand why she'd want to get away for a while. Such a tragic coincidence, having two deaths of exactly the same... Oh, confound that woman. Wait a minute. What do you mean by tragic coincidence? Hmm? Oh... Well, as I understand it, Mrs. Barrett's husband also died in some sort of accident. Yes, Countess. Now, here is our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow... The trail back into a man's past is a faint and twisting one. And at times it runs through quicksand. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Hugh Brundage speaking. <laughs>